It's been several quarters that we've been talking about a very difficult situation for the Indian automobile industry. Now, of course, all eyes are on the election and uh, the wait and watch is something that's universally been accepted as perhaps the only way forward. However, in that environment, the companies have to continue to do their business and uh, we are now looking at yet another month where sales haven't quite gone the way the industry expected, especially after the finance minister announced excise cuts. To talk about all of this and also his new responsibility at GM India, we have the man at the helm of the company, Mr. Arvind Saxena. Good to see you. Thank you. And uh, I kind of can welcome you back to Delhi now, I think. Thank you. Um, it's good to see you back here and um, in the new role. So. Before I get to that, though, a quick word about what I just mentioned there at the start. Uh, it's become a situation now where every month we keep sort of looking for some kind of signs of hope or a glimmer of hope not coming. I think it's a bigger issue than simply excise cut or any offer in the market, I think, because frankly, everyone is trying his best. But I think what is not moving is a sentiment in the market, and I think that is what is affecting the growth of the market here. Uh, till the time and the only expectation now is maybe post elections we have a stable government again uh, at the center and uh, there could be decisions which would impact uh, the sentiment and economy in the true sense and that is where I guess uh, things should start moving in. Otherwise uh, today there is nothing which really makes a big difference in the market and we are just doing business that's all. For several months we have been hearing this thing from a lot of players yeah, that yeah. Uh, it's only a new launch that sparks the market in some way uh, but the existing portfolio is getting tougher and tougher to sell. Uh, is that still true? Yeah, I think so very much true because uh, even despite few the new models launch, uh, if you compare the past let's say seven, eight years back, whenever you had new models, whenever you had new segments uh, you know, becoming more competitive, there's always in growth in the market. Mm. But it's the first time when we had many new models, uh, new segments which have really emerged, sub 4 meter, small SUV, but yet the overall industry is still struggling and uh, we are still on a decline. So, so while I these segments are doing well, it's at the so expense of something else. Expense of something else. So the, if you really divide or analyze industry in two parts, uh, with and without the new models, I think the without new model, the situation is quite uh, grim at this point. Which then brings me to GM, <laughs> because it's been like that for some time now, where we, of course, got a uh, couple of cars last year. Yeah. But uh, having said that, um, it's now been a bit of a dry patch. At the mm -hmm. Auto Expo as well, you only had minor facelifts, but no new yeah. products. Yeah. Uh, you're coming into this situation, of course, on the back of a lot of this trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, of course, will talk to you about some of that. But uh, the immediate focus for you, given the yeah. fact that you don't have a new car ready to launch tomorrow, yeah. what's the immediate focus? I think it's a very challenging, no doubt about it, I think as you put it in, 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 a, in a milder form. Uh, but I still see it's, there's a lot of opportunities within mm -hmm. this and uh, again I would say it would be on both sides. One, uh, internal opportunities which one has to really make uh, business more sustainable. Uh, we really need to look at our cost and how we can improve on that because that is where we'll get strength to fight back in the market. And from market side, I think there are many things which we could really do uh, to make our business more attractive for our dealers and also for our customers. And uh, I think that is what I am looking at right now to uh, make impact on both sides. Uh, and uh, I think over a period of next few months, uh, that's where I would really be working on. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's happening in the market yeah. and, and especially with your dealers, etc. Mm -hmm. But before that, I think the larger point that has come up fairly often now with GM over the last maybe 18, 20 months. Mm. Um, what's the larger strategy in the sense, of course we understand what challenges you mm. face and what you are trying to do internally mm. as a company, mm. but uh, when it comes to the, the global management, mm. what's the focus on India like? Because a few years ago it seemed more like they wanted India to be this autonomous mm. region. Mm. You know, you had a, a stake sale happen, there was this whole mm. liaison with the Chinese operation. Mm. Now that's changed again. So, uh, so at the time you were entering the company, mm. you uh, I'm assuming you talk to Detroit. Mm. What is that larger message? What do they want from India? I think India today is very clear. It's just a long-term uh, market for GM and that's what uh, is very clear in the global as well as regional leadership. And uh, what I think GM has done globally is that uh, they have really strengthened their international operations and we are part of the international operations. Mm. So our mandate is very clear that we need to make this business grow and uh, we need to make this more sustainable and we are here for a long term. So with that in mind, I think that's where we really need to look at a lot of fundamental things. And uh, I guess it would take a little bit of time for someone to really drill it down to the issues and then take some actions there. 
but the same thing ties into the product strategy as well because we seem to be very strongly with the with the Korean portfolio mm. coming out of the mm. the Daewoo uh, plant, and then suddenly it shifted to China. Mm. Uh, where does that where does that head from here? Well, new products, frankly, it's maybe it's a little too early for me to make Not any comment products, on that. But, but just, uh, just the larger plan. I think one thing very clear that we definitely need products which are suitable for this market. Now, mm. the point is whether they come from Korea or they come from China, I think is not such a big issue. But the products have to be relevant for this market. And uh, I think today with the kind of portfolio that we have, we have a fairly large portfolio. And uh, we are present in many segments which are uh, of importance of as far as overall passenger car market is concerned. So we need to really look at how we keep it more exciting uh, for us and for our products. But would you have that flexibility or that say in yeah. saying that look, when it comes to the global portfolio, mm. this looks relevant for India and then there is no boundary or no border drawn out saying you have to only access from this market or that market. Well, as of this uh, moment, it doesn't look to me that there's any problem, but okay. uh, maybe 30 days could be too little, too less <laughs> for me yeah. to spell it out. But I don't see that as, as a limitation for me, really. So then let me understand from you, um, at, the, at the time when, when you were brought in here, mm. um, what's the mandate that you've been given? Obviously, they're going to look at consolidating and, and larger number of sales. I mean, that, that yeah. goes without saying. But uh, when it comes to this long-term strategy for India, mm. what's the role that they expect from you? I think one very clear, I think uh, global leadership and regional leadership of General Motors, they understand that uh, India is an important market. And uh, it's a very different market in a way that uh, consumer preferences are quite different from other small car markets, if you ask me. Uh, other big small car markets could be Europe or uh, mm. South America or maybe Japan, but they are quite different from here. Mm. So one of the major uh, things which uh, possibly I need to contribute is to make this requirement spell out very clearly what is that Indian market needs and how, what really kicks into this market. And I think that's an area which would be a, one of the major part uh, of me to uh, communicate and, uh, you know, really uh, expand this thinking what is Indian market is and what do we need for this market. And I guess based on that, then we need to make further progress in terms of uh, getting this operation much better. And, and you've been given that sort of flexibility and freedom. Really? Yeah. No, it is encouraging also yeah. from the point of view of the fact that, uh, you know, this is the first time we don't have mm. someone from the GM family, mm. you know, being sort of posted to India <laughs> and uh, as it were, yeah. and, and actually having an Indian from within the market yeah. uh, coming in to, to head things. So, so that in itself is a signal. Right. Um, now let's talk about that, uh, you know, fit within within the larger strategy. Now, obviously, there would be a certain volumes target for you yeah. and you're not probably going to tell me what that is. But um, from a market relevance point of view or a share point of view, mm. um, one year, two years, three years, what are the kind of milestones you want to set for yourself? See, clearly, as of now, we are uh, around 2.5, 2.4% market share. And uh, I think uh, important thing, even if I look at next three years, I think what one would really like to work on, one could be uh, purely in terms of volume, but more than the volume, I think uh, Im first importance for me would be to make my uh, network or uh, customer facing uh, activities uh, far more improved because that is where I think we would able then be able to sustain business for mm -hmm. a longer period. And at the same time, I think other important thing would be to uh, really focus in terms of localization, in terms of you know making our business far more financially viable, let me say, let me put it that way. So while we work on both sides, so uh, that is where I think we would be able to make an impact and uh, I think we should look forward for bigger numbers later on. And while this transitionary phase is on, and, and of course we wish you all the luck to achieve those targets, mm. um, where, does, where does working capital come from? I mean, will this continue to be from Detroit directly to the Indian operation in terms of your requirements? Or would you look at other means? Because in between, we saw a stake sale happen. We saw some confusion there as well. Uh, maybe too early to make any comment on that, but I don't see any any uh, major problem on that. That's all I can say at this point, rather than right. making a specific comment on where it would come from. No, fair enough. Um, yeah. The the SAIC stake, though, currently mm. um, it's below ten percent and below, much very marginal. So it stays there. I mean, there's no change happening in that. Uh, front. As of now, it stays there. Yeah. And no other player coming into no. the picture either. Not as of now. All right. Um, now, 
back to the whole thing about strengthening the network, something that you mentioned mm -hmm. just now. Um, we had a very interesting phase that the company went through when the global bankruptcy happened. Mm -hmm. There was all sorts of fears of you know what will happen to the business here. And it mm -hmm. was interesting that that was actually a time where GM or Chevrolet mm -hmm. as a brand mm -hmm. did actually pretty well here. You know, yeah. the company came out and actually talked about the bankruptcy, mm -hmm. even to the consumer, mm -hmm. even through your advertising, and yes. said, "Look, we are here to stay, and we don't have any problem. We're not shutting shop." Mm -hmm. Um, and that actually worked positively for you in a, in a sense. You find yourself in another bit of a trough mm. right now. Mm. Uh, what's going to be the communication that gets you out of it? And obviously my reference here goes back to the Tavera problem. Mm. See, I think that was a very uh, sensible, I would say, from the company point of view that this is one company which, could, which is so transparent to in order to bring out some facts. But uh, I think we are making every effort to rectify that issue and we are uh, very aggressively all our network is engaged into this. So, but that's one thing and I would say that uh, uh, that is one opportunity again to win back my customers if you ask me. And uh, we are really taking it very seriously. We have already done a very large number of customer contact and a lot of corrections have already been done. So that's, I would say that's behind us. We, we have to move away from there and that's where I think the network uh, excitement and activity would make a difference for us. Uh, well, there are uh, something which has happened, but uh, I would say we have gone beyond that now. I think it, it, to a lot of consumers, they may not even know the specifics or, or care to know the specifics, but there, there was this bit of a trend that seemed to mm -hmm. set in a few months ago that mm -hmm. said, no point buying a, a GM car, mm -hmm. you know, we're not sure about what's happening with the company. Mm -hmm. That uncertainty is difficult to shake because like I said, people aren't looking at specifics, there's no black and white, yeah. you know, there's just a feeling yeah. or a perception. Uh, becomes more difficult to fight that, you think? Uh, not really anymore. I think it depends how we use it. Uh, if we are able to service those customers better, I think uh, they would realize how committed we are to our customers and how committed we are for the market. And I think this would be another good opportunity to uh, win that confidence of consumers and talk about it. Do you think it's also important for you to get back into the, um, perhaps not in terms of volume, it's not as relevant as what, you know, the, the tier two town population might be mm. for some of your products, mm. but uh, but from a relevance or perception point of view, mm. do you think it's important to go after the, the well-heeled mm. urban customer again? No, we have to do because frankly the major volume still <coughs> remains in the top 10 or 15 cities. Yeah. Uh, while your spread and geographical spread is important to get a feeling of reassurance to consumer from the service point of view. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we have done actually. What I think we have done, we have roughly about 150, 160 dealer partners. But we are present in about 270 odd locations. So what we have done is uh, we have expanded our current business partners to newer locations to give that reassurance. Mm. But yes, focus is still with would be the top markets because frankly our cars are uh, both luckily, I mean they are also acceptable in urban markets as well as rural market. But naturally urban market is far bigger for us. And uh, I think we would continue to focus on both from that point. What about engagement of prospective customers? Because, um, you know, th there was a time again when mm -hmm. uh, Chevrolet as a brand was perhaps the most invested in the digital space. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, some other brands are also heavily invested yeah. in that area, but um, social media, things like that. Do, mm -hmm. do you see yourself going down that road a little more aggressively? We are, I think, already doing pretty well there and uh, we have a fairly good conversion, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, what I saw recently was that we are almost converting about 5 to 6 percent of digital uh, leads that we get. And frankly, by any standard, it is pretty good it's because one of the your, best ones which yeah. you get is about 3 to 4 percent maximum. <coughs> and we, I see that, uh, you know, opportunity there because our customer profile, as you rightly said, is such that which is more digital savvy mm. and uh, we could connect better with them. And, and naturally it is very, very cost efficient and far more deeper communication than what you can possibly do in a 20 second ad or a half a page ad. You also have the challenge of now trying to embed more and more technology or gadgetry within the car. Mm. Um, you know, there is a greater expectation from the same yeah. kind of customer. Mm. Uh, do you think that is going to also help you uh, because that at least supersedes the need for a brand new product? No, we would be looking at it. Frankly, that's what I would say would be a clear product life cycle management mm. and uh, in a times like this where uh, uh, you have to keep the excitement on on a product or brand is only way could be to create special value packages, create some line extenders. So I think that's a very normal uh, way and in fact if you recently noticed last month we had uh, 
a special value package on sale as well as on enjoy and yes. I think we got a fairly good result. A uh, much better result than what we've been selling for the last couple of months. We had uh, fairly better uh, footfalls in the showroom. So that's the way to go, frankly. And, and uh, uh, we would look for that to have at a reasonable interval uh, create more excitement around uh, our brands. Yes. But I'm, I'm sure even you'll admit, uh, as I know you to be very candid anyway, that while this might make up some of that lost yeah. uh, volume, you know, I mean, you're you're down about thirty percent year on year in in mm. in most of your segments. Perhaps in some segments more, in some s segments slightly less. Um, to to really make up a gap like that, mm. you do need new products. Mm. Um, how urgently are you pressing the demand for new products back to global? I can't say whether it's a new model is the, is the only solution, but uh, not the only solution. But you uh, certainly need that in your but arsenal. But frankly, even if you start talking today, it would for anyone. <laughs> It'll it take some time. Four years. Yeah. So I don't think GM or anyone can do any magic for a shorter period than that unless it is already planned. So uh, I think important thing would be how, because we have a fairly large range. Now are you saying it's not planned? I have no idea. I mean, I can't comment on that again, I would say. Uh, but uh, within the, our own current portfolio, there is enough which can be done, mm -hmm. I, I guess. Uh, whether it is in terms of creating a uh, special edition, whether it's in terms of creating or getting some new features. So, I mean, that's, that's something which you will have to really work very closely. That is, which can also be turned around quicker than anything oh, yes. else. Yeah. But uh, how difficult is it for you to keep a balance between margins and volume then? Because um, you're also, I mean, the challenge is not simply to regain volume, mm -hmm. but it's also in a space where you may not necessarily have the, the, the product that hits the sweet spot. I mean, you may be peripheral. Yeah. But you know, comp subcompact SUV mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. um, and we've talked so much about that e even in your previous mm -hmm. uh, um, role. So, how difficult then does it become to maintain the balance between margin and volume? Well, it depends. Or do you sacrifice one for the other. Well, we have to look at it in totality. I would say. I mean, uh, it could be a uh, very difficult task. Not not a very easy thing naturally. Uh, but we need to find ways how we could create a balance, which could be through a model mix, which could mm. be through other uh, promotional uh, activities that you undertake. Uh, but yes, we need to find a balance between the two. I, we, because nobody can continue selling cars at loss or don't make money out of the business. If you don't, then I mean, there are ways how we have to uh, make a proper business case for anything. And that's, I th it's a challenge, no doubt but about it, in today's time. No, but Arvind, having said that, part of this mandate that you have now been given, yeah. uh, does it involve that at least in the short term you have to regain volume up to X level? I would say the mandate is more to make business more viable, more viable. and more workable, okay. which I think is not purely the bottom line, but also the volume, because frankly, uh, if in a long term we need to go with, that's where I think the balance is very, very important, uh, that we have to have certain bottom line and certain number of volumes. I mean, it's very easy for anyone to, if you sell maybe 50% less, maybe you will make more money, but that's not the case. So uh, that's the way I w I'm looking at it and that's what I'm expected to do. So looking uh, or addressing that viability then and, and mm -hmm. trying to find the real mm -hmm. perfect formula for this. Yeah. Uh, the good thing for you is that you already have most of the big investments behind you. I mean, you've yeah. got the engines coming out of Daegao, you've also got the capacity that yeah. you need to play with. Uh, is there any potential to look at taking some of these cars and shipping them out of India in a bigger way? Uh, too early for me to make any comment really, but... Uh, I mean, is that an option you would examine or is it all really domestic? I would definitely focus? look for it. That's all I can say at this okay. point. Yeah. Oh, that, that's fair. Yeah. Um, and, and what is the kind of timetable you are working on? Would you mm. say that you know, you're going to wait and watch before the elections, then after that it's going to be the festive season? Mm. Or are you looking at you know, in the next year as, the, as, as your sort of tranche of I time? I think definitely for me personally, if you ask me, I would take another two months to really get deeper into the issues mm. and uh, where we need to make remarkable or major decisions. Uh, but yes, I think uh, after three months, things should start uh, rolling in the in the direction in which we want to roll. It's been a very complex mm -hmm. market also the last few months. And uh, as someone who's watched it from the outside and the inside for you, mm -hmm. I mean, other brands and, and the brands you were working with mm -hmm. as well, I won't ask you to comment on your former employer. But, uh, you know, we've, we've clearly seen very sharp distinctions in the market uh, when it comes to certain brands doing really well with some mm -hmm. products mm -hmm. and some, so certain brands starting really well but then falling off on the wayside. Mm -hmm. Um, what does it take to really impress the customer because nobody seems to be able to crack that formula? I think uh, some, I won't take name, but some have cracked it and uh, I think main reason has been that I think their understanding of Indian consumer mind is a little better than others. And because it's a very, Indian consumer is also very, very uh, different. And sharp hair, 
is uh, I, I would say is very demanding the aspiration for buying car is much much bigger for them yeah. and uh, they expect far more things or far more uh, you know out of their cars which anybody else doesn't expect that now in that situation if you are able to understand what it takes to you know take that indian consumer uh, is is important thing you possibly can't always adopt cars uh, of which are did not designed for indian market um, uh, to bring into India, I think it will always be very challenging for you to uh, you know, meet the expectations. But if you have something which are designed keeping, I won't say India only in mind, but also keeping Indian requirements in mind, I think would possibly chance of success is better. Now, having said that, mm -hmm. I have to ask you uh, the question which I know you're expecting mm -hmm. from me, which I've partially asked perhaps, but mm -hmm. uh, at the time at the Auto Expo when we met Stefan Jacobi, mm -hmm. uh, I asked him the same thing and mm -hmm. he was fairly candid in saying the Adra concept which was on display and got mm. actually really good feedback from mm. most mm. of the visitors. Mm. Subcompact SUV, mm. sub 4 meter, we know you need it. Mm. Every car maker needs mm. one right now. Mm. Um, and he said not before 2017. Mm. So that's a long time for you to be able to sort of try all these different things that you've mm. mentioned mm. to just keep things going and to sustain. Mm. Um, I know you're going to say that I can't talk about when the next product is going no, to I come. I need to ask Stefan Jacobi <laughs> for this actually. <laughs> but I think that should. is mine. <laughs> because 2017 is yeah. far away. I mean, yeah. I am a little, I am concerned mm. when I hear something like that. So, is that, isn't that just a huge challenge? Uh, it is a challenge. I, first thing I said, it, it is challenging. Right? Well, I mean, that's bigger than what most people have as a challenge. Uh, but I think there's still uh, opportunities within this, whatever we have. And I think I would definitely try and work on those. And having said that, you would also try and sort of shape the strategy from here. Yeah. So we don't necessarily wait till 2017. I really have no, I mean, it's too early for me to really comment on that thing. But uh, yes, I think I see my role is to really translate what India needs uh, in the short and long term. And I am very sure that GM would give a due consideration to that understanding of this market and hopefully that should help uh, this company. When you say long term, how far are you going? No, I mean, if you look at any anyone, I mean, long term, generally, you would take 8 to 10 years, mm. uh, but short term could be 3 to 5 years. I remember uh, <coughs> for the longest time, there used to always be these projections till 2020. <laughs> now, suddenly, 2020 doesn't seem that it's far 22, away. 22, I think. 20, <laughs> now, people are starting looking 20, at 2025. 20, yeah. but, uh, but is there some sort of a, a market share target or what, what are you looking at, really, when you talk about that position in India? No, one, I think definitely a market share in the segments in which you are playing. I think mm. these should be uh, a significant player, uh, no doubt about it. And um, and get into uh, new segments. I mean, surely you'll want to do no, that. No, naturally. I mean, if you ask me, the two clear emerging segments are sub-4 meter, uh, which has become much, much bigger. And uh, also the small SUV. So, mm. they are emerging. I'm sure uh, uh, even before me, uh, GM must be watching this uh, with great interest and maybe I can only help hmm. in understanding that segment better. Well, one thing we know for sure is that uh, what you talked about, that understanding the mind of the consumer, that is something that I'm sure you bring to the table because hmm. firstly, you know, being from the market as yeah. well as yeah. having the kind of experience you have had, um, that would be a big focus area for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how are you going to plug that into the network? I mean, are you meeting with dealers directly? I am now or? starting to meeting the dealers. I've had a small, uh, you know, uh, chat with uh, a dealer council that we have, but I think that's just to more to know them and let me know, uh, me introduce myself to them. But yes, I would now uh, get a little more deeper into our network operations and uh, try and find where, where else we can do. I mean, one of the very quick things which comes to my mind is uh, used car business, a mm. pre-owned car business, which I think uh, Chevrolet is the only brand which doesn't have an organized business. Uh, that's a very good opportunity to retain your customers, to you know, make your business uh, viable for your dealer and uh, do many things with that car. So, I mean, that's, I mean, often I can say this is one of the good opportunities. On in terms of customer uh, uh, satisfaction side, I think that's another very important, especially for whatever has happened in past. I think that's one area we possibly need to do uh, a little bit more extra uh, to, to, to win that reassurance from our customers. So. Uh, that's another area which I would really look for and third naturally would be the customer satisfaction with our products uh, in terms of after sales improvement, in terms of uh, the quality of work which goes into their cars and I think these are uh, fundamental things of the business. I mean there's no uh, new you science that we've got has, to do this anyway. But yeah. uh, important thing would be that how well they're implemented and how well they are responded by dealers. 
and I think that's a differentiator in this this business. You partly answered my next question, and let me let me sort of sum it up with this one, um, because what you mentioned now is uh, are the three things that you're looking at from inside, yeah. what you can do in the immediate term yeah. to uh, to at least start turning things around. From the point of view of the consumer, mm. over the next few months, elections notwithstanding, mm. uh, what are the three things that they can expect from Chevrolet in terms of what they see? happening with the brand or the products? I think we are working very strongly and I will work very strongly in improving our quality of our products. Um, we have a full uh, organization in place anyway, uh, but I think we will work very, very closely to make sure that we turn out a better quality vehicle than what we are doing. And secondly, from a network side, mm -hmm. uh, which could be uh, the quality of operations, uh, uh, which is again for the customers. Uh, how well uh, we are able to uh, give a customer experience both in showroom as well as workshop. And thirdly, I think any opportunities, how uh, we could exploit those within our own current portfolio. Right. So, these are three things I hope you we can be able to do it. You are going to be traveling a lot across the country, I am sure, the next few months and keeping very busy. Yeah. But, uh, but we wish you all the very best because uh, you. You are always well wishes for all the brands and so it would be nice to see something happening with uh, Chevrolet as well. All the very best. Thank, Thank you for speaking to us as well. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Thanks.